you've got a signed settlement agreement and the other side won't pay up. Well, what do you do? Well, when a dispute is resolved, the terms of the resolution are put into a document and that document's generally called a settlement agreement. Sometimes it's called a release. So what are the parts of it? Well, the people or companies involved in the settlement are included in the release. The injured party is releasing all the claims against the other parties, meaning that person's not going to sue them. And third, there's an exchange of money paid to the injured party. So I recently had a case where a client had a dispute. It was a rather large claim um, with a very large amount of money and everything was done, but the time passed for the corporation to pay him the money that they agreed to pay. So he was in a bit of a pickle, uh, came to me for advice. And so the, the, the way to fix these things is you've got this document and that document is considered by the courts essentially to be a contract. So the claim that you bring against the party that's not paying is essentially a breach of contract. And so uh, what you do, or if you have a lawyer, what the lawyer would do was file a complaint with a court saying simply, hey, look, we have this document that's a contract. This party did what this party needed to do, sign the release. The other party did not do what it was supposed to do, which is pay the money. And so you're asking the judge, to enforce the contract and the judge will do that. And in an order issued by the court, the court order will tell the person to pay the money. And it's a little different than just somebody agreeing in a contract to pay the money because if someone agrees in a contract and doesn't pay you, there's not really much you can do about it. If you have a court order telling the person to pay the money, there is a lot the court can do. You can have that order turned into a judgment you can go into collections, you can take their assets, their bank accounts, their house, garnish their wages. Uh, and there, there's more that can be done too, but it just makes it a much better way to enforce the contract. Now, additionally, in some settlement agreements, there's usually a whole bunch of terms and oftentimes they'll have a term that says the winning party is entitled to attorney's fees. So what that means is if it becomes necessary to go to court to enforce the contract, the party that had to bring the claim to the court would be entitled to reasonable attorney's fees. So in a case like that, you could not only go after the money that you are owed by the contract, the settlement agreement, but you can also request the court grant the fees you paid to your lawyer in order to enforce the contract. So you have to be careful though, because it goes both ways. If you don't have an ironclad case and you're suing a huge corporation and they're going to have 10 lawyers working on it, racking up you know hundreds of thousands of dollars of bills, if you lose, they could potentially ask the court to award them their attorney's fees.